Welcome to this service of worship for the 7th of February. We are very glad that you have tuned in and we hope that as you are enjoying these services that we are taping, that you will give us a thumbs up, even subscribe to the channel. We appreciate your comments as well. Let us now, as we begin our worship, calm our hearts and our minds as we listen to the prelude that David will now play. Hear the call to worship. O oh God, as we gather today, we thank you for the faith of those who, over the centuries, have passed on the faith. We know we are here today by your grace and also because of the faithfulness of those who have gone before us. May we also transmit the faith in unsullied and undimmed witness so that those who follow may come to know you and your will. Fortify us with a true faith as we draw inspiration and incentive to be faithful in our time. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, you are a loving, gracious God. You've offered us forgiveness and the gift of life in you. Thank you that your love is perfect. It never fails, and that nothing can separate us from your love. We pray that our lives would be filled and overflowing with the power of your love so we can make a difference in this world and bring honor to you. We ask for your help in reminding us that the most important things are not what we do outwardly, not based on any talent or gift, but the most significant thing we can do in this life is simply to love you and to choose to love others. Lord, thank you that your love is patient. Help us to show patience with those around us. Lord, thank you that your love is kind. Help us to extend kindness to others. Lord, thank you that true love is not jealous. Help us Cast aside feelings of jealousy or hatred towards others. Amen. And now let us sing hymn number 326, O for a thousand tongues to sing, out of Voices United, verses 1, 2, and 5.
Let us pray together. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. The first scripture reading is from Psalm 147. Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, how pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor is the light in the length legs of the man. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. And from the New Testament, we read from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 29. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. May God bless the reading of his word to us this day and bring us great joy. Today's message is the gospel of healing. What a beautiful picture of a caring God the psalmist paints. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. God is caring and compassionate, like a caring doctor or nurse. He dresses the wounds to heal them physically, and he dresses the emotion to bring complete wholeness of body and spirit. God is the ultimate physician with the best bedside manner. Thus, I actually picture God more as a nurse. He brings the rain so grass will grow and there will be healthy livestock. God is sovereign over creation and cares for our physical needs of hunger. God renews life throughout creation to continue the cycle of life and bless us as the crown of creation. The Lord delights in those who put their hope in his unfailing love. God is infinite, and his love is infinite. God is faithful to his promise. He will not and cannot fail us. It is contrary to his character. We can put our trust in God. And as we do, God will joyfully uphold us. As Jesus walked the earth, that image of a faithful, loving, eternal God 
comes to life amidst us. I think that if you want to become rich, you will want to go to a large city like Toronto. You might try to go up the executive ladder of a big company, or you might produce and sell some new product or item, or you might get involved in some land development. Likewise, if you want to have great influence, even develop a big successful church, you would choose Toronto or the surrounding area as a base. You would not be moving to a place like North Bay in order to become a national hero or famous. Jesus didn't think that way. He did not go to Jerusalem in order to influence the world. He did not go there to preach and to heal the sick, the lame, and the demonic. No, instead he goes very far north to a small town on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Was it fear because John the Baptist had been arrested? No. Jesus understood that he had a twofold mission to fulfill. He came to express the love of God in his teaching and healing and ultimate death. And secondly, he had to leave behind a trained group of believers. As we pick up today's text in the Gospel of Mark, we meet James, John, Simon, and Andrew. Here are the first four disciples, two sets of brothers, fishermen, who Jesus was training to be fishers of men and key leaders of the new religious movement, the Christian church. These four men lived in Capernaum as they fished on the Sea of Galilee. They were rugged men, devout in spirit. They were the base upon which he would build his group of believers. Jesus set up his base camp in Capernaum with this small group of four men. And as Jesus lived in Capernaum, he obviously came into contact with the families of his four disciples. And as Simon's mother-in-law was ill, Jesus naturally healed her. He was aware of the misery and intervened. But her healing was not natural or explainable. It was immediate, miraculous, divine. It was newsworthy, and the news spread like wildfire. At this point, I'm not very sure how much of a time lapse there was between the healing of the demonic that I spoke about last week and that of Simon's mother-in-law this week. But here was something new and exciting. I must admit, I don't like these movies where you see one event and then it brings you back to something different. And then it goes on, comes back, goes on. I get very frustrated with that. And at this point, it seems that that's what the biblical text does. Because as last week's text ended with the news spreading quickly throughout Galilee. Again, we see news spreading again quickly. But there seems to be no time between what happened last week and this week. Although I actually think there was quite a bit of time. Because there was a, quite a bit of time that Jesus spent in the town of Capernaum before he moved on. The impact of the news of the dramatic healing was a large crowd at the door, eager to have an audience with Jesus, eager to be healed by him. And the response was overwhelming. Jesus responded initially with a positive response of healing the sick and driving out the demons, but then something caused him to stop. And he was eager to leave. 
the people were eager to be healed. They were enthusiastic about the traumatic. But there was almost a mob mentality, drunken with desire for dramatics, for healings. What was missing was the soberness of listening to the message that Jesus came to give. And his response to it all was to leave so that he could preach his message and heal the sick and demonic. And that he did to the people in the various towns and villages throughout Galilee. What should we learn from this? What might I apply to my life from this? First is that to me it seems evident that the healings and the miracles of Jesus were signs demonstrating his divine power. The healings also were part and partial of the good news Jesus taught. He over and over again healed the sick and released the demonic, demonstrating the healing of the relationship with the divine. As we are one with God, there's healing and wholeness. Does that mean we should hold a prayer service expecting dramatic healings like some do believe? I think not. Does it mean that those who are ill or remain, remain ill have sinned and are away from God? I think not. Why does bad things happen to good people? Is an age-old question that has not been answered. Why do some catch an illness while others don't? While, do, while some have COVID very slightly, whereas others are gravely ill. These do not have spiritual answers. Our response as a society and a church in seeing the sick, the lame, the emotionally distraught, and those that struggle spiritually and mentally should be empathy. We should seek to lessen their burden and bring healing to their lives. As I think of the concept of wholeness and healing, I am personally persuaded that I should be more accepting of the individual that I come into contact with. As I now walk my dogs each day, I greet people that I meet, unless I perhaps have my head down and I don't notice you waving from your vehicle. I must admit, I, I've been told that I keep my head down way too often, and that might be because of my shyness or some other reason. Please don't take offense when I do but I really want to interact with you. The other day, someone stopped and greeted me as I was walking. And as I looked at the driver of the vehicle, I went, I think I recognize you. And they went, yes, I was a student of yours a few years back. And it was great to have that little interaction it really made my day. And I think it is very important for the people that I greet because I think it affects their day positively just as it affects my day in a positive manner. I believe that we all appreciate and enjoy those moments with interaction with each other. It is one of those things that I think we miss during this time. But I think especially of those that struggle, that might have a mental handicap, mental illness, or just feeling depressed. As Jesus shared the good news and compassionately healed, so I, as a Christian, should bring healing to a broken world by my acceptance of others, others from different cultures, different races, 
and different perspectives. I think that we, as a church, have a great opportunity at this point to think of the Black Lives Matter movement and to be a part of it, a key part. I think of the equity issue today. I think of the issue still of the problem between the different, between how we treat women as opposed to men in the workplace. I think we need to continue to strive towards equity, towards respect and dignity of others. I think it is great that one of the first things that President Biden did was to sign a document stopping the prejudice of people coming from a major Muslim country. I think as a church, we need to continue to provide strength and encouragement and authority towards all those issues of equity. And I, as an individual, can do my part to show respect and to provide dignity and acceptance to others. As God is one, may we be one. Let us now sing hymn number 663 from Voices United, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Let us now pray together. God of spirit and truth, we come to you as the source of all there is and will be. You are the source of all life and all creation. We bow in awe and humility. You created us in thy image and set your face upon us in a loving smile. We receive your love and mercy and boldly come to your throne. Help us as we personally and individually struggle with loneliness, depression, frustration, heartache, and sickness. 
God, we pray in silence for those near and dear to us who struggle with these same issues. Comfort and strengthen them. O oh God, we pray for our world and its leaders. Help the vaccine give worldwide relief to COVID. Help us to further research on other diseases. Give us the compassion to eradicate hunger and disease. Help us to be more caring about the environment. And help us to bring respect and dignity to all people of all races, creed, religion, gender, and sexual orientation. This we ask in the powerful name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We will now be singing in conclusion Hymn number 563, Jesus, You Have Come to the Lake Shore. David will introduce this hymn before he begins playing it. Thanks, Chris. This hymn that we're going to sing is one of my favorite hymns. And I know it's one of Chris's favorite hymns. I also know that it's a favorite of this congregation. This hymn was written by Monsignor Cesario Gabarain, and he was best known for his Spanish liturgical music. He was born in 1936, died in 1991. He was appointed the priest chaplain prelate of His Holiness by Pope John Paul II. This particular hymn he wrote in 1979 and it was originally titled Fisher of Men. There's a, a Spanish translation to that, which I'm not going to try. The words are based on the Gospels of Matthew 4, verses 18 to 20, Mark 1, verses 16 to 20, and Luke 5, verses 1 to 11. And these readings talk about Jesus' calling of his disciples. Now, this particular hymn has been translated into 80 different languages. I like this hymn not just because of the words, but also because of the tune, the melody. It's absolutely beautiful. And this is a particular hymn that I often enjoy opening the organ up full. So I hope you'll enjoy singing this hymn. There's lots to be known about the writer of this hymn. If you go onto the uh, internet, you'll find all sorts of information. So let's sing, Jesus, you have come to the lake shore.
Thank you, David, for playing that hymn, which is one of my favorites. And thank you for that interesting information about it. It made it even much more meaningful. And now let us conclude our worship as we hear the blessing. It is the one from Emily Swan and Ken Wilson. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast of that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And now David will play the postlude. Thank you. 